Hey, y'all. We've missed you. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Todd. And we are Salt and Pepper Wine. I feel like it's been forever since we talked to you guys. So we're just really excited to be back. Yeah, we're, actually, we're starting this new thing. It's uh, Friday night, you know, as per usual. Most <laughs> people here, we uh, pop open a bottle of wine and say, uh, thank you that uh, I didn't kill anybody this week. Seriously. So we're really excited <laughs> to open up a bottle and let's talk about it. Yeah, and we actually have really started looking into the grapes that grow well in Texas. We've been, as most of you guys who have been following us, we know that we've been all over the state of Texas over the course of the last, I don't know, what, three years, four years, something like that. Yeah, three to five years. Yeah. Five years. And so in so doing, we've ran across a lot of, a lot of grapes and a lot of varietals that you just would not traditionally see coming from California or anything like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so because of that, you know, one of the big things, you know, knowing, knowing the Texas wine is one thing, but then knowing where it actually all came from, whether it's the Rhone Valley, whether it's Italy, whether it's Spain with your Tempranillos and stuff like that, you, you definitely want to get, you definitely want to see what the old, old world stuff is for obviously purposes of, you can kind of compare and contrast what, what the grape is doing. Exactly. Once it comes to the new world. so And that's actually really uh, something exciting Texas is doing. Um, we have so many different varietals that we are growing right here in Texas because they grow well here in Texas. So, you know, we get to like taste the world right here in Texas instead of, you know, focusing on one grape we get to focus on a lot of grapes. And I think that really helps with education just about wine in general. But the cool thing is we get to do it here in Texas. So, you know, let's put up our Texas wine against their world counterparts and let's talk about it. Oh, yeah. And what we're actually doing uh, tonight is if, if any of you guys have actually met me, you know that I am a huge Negro Amaro fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she absolutely hates it whenever I go or walking around, but you know, cause it's all I ever really talk about is, you know, <laughs> Eden Hill, the Negro Amaro, the midnight in the vineyard. That is awesome. You know, that, that's one of those, uh, wines that whenever we go and talk to Somalia, some, whenever we go and talk to, uh, the, uh, the wine guys and gals, um, uh, the small, small, Somaliers. Somaliers. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever we go and talk to the sommeliers and, and the guys and gals within the industry, it's very interesting to see their reaction to it because many times what will actually happen there is they will say, oh, it's Texas wine. Oh, it, right away, automatically, it sucks. It's horrible. I had it 20 years ago, and I did not like it, it which I cannot um, – he can't years, knock him down. I can't knock him for that because, let's face it here, 20 years ago, that was the reality. It was, but, I mean, it's getting exciting because it people is. are starting to open their mind. They're starting to get bored with, you know, kind of the status quo. And so people's palates, they want something a little different. And so that's yeah, where they, Texas they want that. Is. They want that something that they can get excited about. Yep, exactly. It's, it's not necessarily that it's, um, it's not necessarily that, you know, cab is bad. No, no, no. California cab is excellent. Oh, yeah. Bored Bordeaux is excellent. You know, a lot of the, you know, Montepulciano out of, out of, uh, out of Italy is excellent. The Rioja Valley, the Rhone Valley, they're excellent, excellent wines, Yep. but it's just, it's just a little different, you know, something different. You always, you know, you can go and get that off the truck. No problem. But now, now getting something that's, uh, it, you know, a little closer Keep to you home. on your toes. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it's just a little different. It's a little different. And um, also on top of that, I mean, uh, the, the next generation coming up is actually very, very, it's, it's and odd. The sommeliers. Yeah. This, yeah. The younger sommeliers, they're definitely coming up and they actually have, they don't have any preconceived notions to Texas. True. They don't I've remember, seen that. They, they don't remember the, the, the 2002, 2003 horrible ones, except for Pheasant Ridge, it, you know, and, and I don't wish to call anyone out or anything like oh, that. Oh, Pheasant but, Ridge has a delicious 2002. Oh, man, um, dude, uh, man. Oh, uh, what is it? That the Cab Savion. Oh, they actually, okay. Yep. Yeah. We actually have a bottle. I know. <laughs> and it's excellent. And I'm saving it for a special day. <laughs> But no, it, it, getting around all of that stuff, it is, it, it's amazing how these new sommeliers that are coming in, they don't have that, you know, 2002, 2003, 2005, 2007, 2008. They don't have that, that negative 
connotation. Sure. All they remember is pretty much, yeah, 2012 was a pretty good year. Um, you know, 2013, eh, not so good. You know, 2014, eh, you know, yeah, that was getting better. 2015, oh, that was a pretty good year. 2016, okay, that was a very, very good year. Yeah, Texas found its stride. And yeah. definitely, and, you know, and the quality is continu- continuing exactly, to go up. Exactly, exactly. And they are all wanting something new, something different, something, you know, that just really spikes their interest. And so that's been really cool to um, see come that along. Transition. Yeah, the sommeliers and, and wine buyers and, and see that transition. Well, like we were saying, we are doing a new thing where we're doing kind of, you know, Texas wine against the world. We actually went to the wine store tonight and we found a delicious Negro Amaro. I haven't tasted actually, it. Actually, I haven't either. I haven't even but, tasted it, but. Where but, it's going to be delicious. Um, but we found good. a Negro Amaro, which we have not been able to find in just looking at a, your regular wine store. So we bought the bottle, we bought it home, and we're like, let's see what an Italian um, Negro Amaro tastes like against a Texas Negro Amaro. But we're going to be honest. We don't have the Texas Negro Amaro right here in front of us. Ooh, that sounds delicious. We don't have the Texas a Negro Amaro in front of us, but like Todd said, it's his favorite, so he can tell you like from memory, <laughs> and we've had it so many times. So, um, you know, that's how we're gonna do it. Uh, it's definitely it's it's not as dark as that as as uh, Eden Hill. It de- it's definitely not as dark. Okay. It's okay. it's definitely a lot of because uh, you know looking at it, um, most of you know you know even looking at the way in which it it compares to a lot of other wines it's more of a medium body whereas it's very interesting to see it when you actually put it up against an alianico okay Uh, well actually i'll say this let me back up there when you put eden hills alianico and eden hills um negro amaro side by side together you you really see that the negro amaro is actually a deeper color than than the Alianico, which is kind of odd because the Alianico is a full body grape and the Negro Amaro is actually considered a medium body grape, oh. which is, which is crazy to actually think about This is that more is of crazy. a, this is more of a de- definitely a medium a, body, definitely a lot lighter in the color and it's got a lot more brown to it than, so, I mean, obviously it's a four year old. Yeah, it's a 2014 and excuse us, our Italian is awful. Um, actually non-existent but it's a 2012 la petri la petri petri yeah i don't know salinto um, negro amaro it, it it it's def it definitely has that um that fruity aftertaste like it's definitely a fruit forward wine yeah but it's definitely it's definitely you can smell okay so i just smelled it for the first time and it i for some reason i got like chocolate oh yeah do you get yeah. that that's no, and when crazy you, when you because... taste it you get chocolate but but here's the funny thing is that eden hill has more of a mocha taste to it like this but has a mocha t- this has a chocolatey mo- taste to it like scent? A, well no a aroma taste. oh you tasted it already yeah. you're so far ahead oh i'm sorry <laughs> Oh, man, it just smells delicious. And, you know, we'll let you know, we've had it open for about 30 minutes before we even touched it. We just opened it, let, um, it breathe. let it breathe. So and we didn't taste it before we let it breathe. So we don't know what it tastes like before we let it breathe. So we let well, there's it also a lot more sediment in this than than uh, it's it's odd because it's a, there's a lot more sediment in it than than Eden Hill. OK, that's actually kind of kind of odd that you'd have that much sediment in there, but yet. Eden Hill would still have more color. <laughs> and and yours is non decanted and I yeah, mine, decanted yeah, mine. mine. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me do the first sip. No, oh, that is that is wow. Is mm. whereas it's excellent. Wow. This is excellent, but I'm gonna i I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Eden Hill has a has a better aftertaste on it. Well, I I think this they, one is very smooth. Okay, yes, so Eden Hill, smooth. when we had the the Negro Amaro from Eden Hill, I think it it could it needs to um, sit in the bottle a little bit longer just no, because no, you don't think so. Oh, it was excellent. 
I think it needs to sit in the bottle just a little bit longer. Um, this one right here, um, 100% ready to drink right now. Took the first sip. Very easy drinking. Um, the the oak is not overpowering at no, all. No, no, no. Um, very, it, very well balanced. Yeah. It was aged uh, for 12 months in a French oak barrel. So no, it, it's just very... You it know, is extremely subtle. smooth, and you got a lot of that that fruit up for that mm -hmm. forward that, that fruit forward taste. So it, I mean, you obviously got your black cherries, and you got your definitely your your darker wow. fruit. But so smooth, absolutely. Um, it's not super full body to me. No, I don't no, think. No, no, no. But it does. It doesn't have that. It, it doesn't have as pronounced of a mocha finish as, as Eden Hill. No, not. So the scent or the aroma, excuse me, I'm trying to use my correct words. Uh, the, the smell, the, <laughs> the sniffers. Um, the aroma is very mocha chocolatey. Um, but when you taste it, you Which get all. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and then, but the, the, the taste is so good. Oh man. Wow. I'm sorry, but you know what, California cab, you you, you guys you guys need to, well, Texas, you guys need to get on board with the Negro Amaro. I don't I know Crazy Cluster has it. I know who I know there's let's a couple see. out of let's text let's check out um Jeff Cope's uh, Texas Wine Lover to see shout out to Jeff Cope. Thank hello, you. Hello, Jeff. Uh, to see <laughs> what he has. He's done such a great job of making it really easy to kind of see what who's growing what so thanks for that jeff yeah. um oh and 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 jeff you are uh you're also one of those individuals that we look up to so uh, uh thank you for being a trailblazer yeah of course no, honestly and i'm not just saying that to to kiss your ass that's all at any I'm rate sorry. i'm sorry jeff i didn't just say that to kiss your patookas okay so it looks like we've got five vineyards in texas <laughs> That <laughs> uh, party foul. Um, no, no, they're, they're <laughs> it looks like we have five vineyards here in Texas that are growing the Negro Amaro. We've got Alta Marfa, which is out in the Texas Davis Mountains. Um, I actually talk to Ricky on Instagram very frequently. I can't wait to get out and see what he's uh, doing. How many acres does he have, or is it just an acre? This says three acres. Uh, not of, he said. Oh, he only has a couple of um, vines of the Negro Amaro. He wants to see how it's going to do. I don't have my phone in front of me, so I can't see what he told me. No. Hold on. <laughs> sip, sip, sip time. It's, ju it's, ju it's just that close, you know? Mm, Y'all, that, that Negro Amaro is so good. Um, So we've got, uh, you know... Alta Marfa, Ricky. He, then we've got Crazy Cluster Vineyard. That's the Oswalds. Yeah, totally. And, and they actually they actually do it. They're they're actually the ones that uh, do all the contracts for Eden Hill. Okay, so they have Eden Hill. Yeah, I've talked to Chris about that. Really? Yeah, talked to Chris and uh, the horn the horn bakers. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then, uh, well, I suppose we caught them out over at. Uh, we we spied on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no. We went out and uh, talked to uh, uh, Nikhil, huh? And yes, that I love her. I love what she's doing. So, Nara Vineyard. Nara whoop, Vineyard. Whoop. Yep. And I love so, it. So yeah, we we caught we caught them out there. <laughs> you know, Nara Vineyards has some really great grapes. So of oh, course absolutely. we would see them there. You know. Um. So back to Alta Marfa. He said he, so Ricky said that he planted 25 vines just to see if it's going to be the see right. See what it's going to do. Yeah, see what it's going to do out there. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it does in that region because, there. I mean, according to what everyone tells me. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I, was, talking, I was actually talking to Pierre, which uh, he was actually uh, at Newsom at the, uh, at the Newsom Grape Day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That was uh, in, in Lubbock or Plainsview or... I can't level in one of those one of those towns around there. Um, what he was saying is that 
whenever Negro Amaro actually comes to the state of Texas, that it gets actually extremely vigorous. It's not, it, it's not, uh, it, it's, it's not the docile grape that it is over in, in uh, Europe. Um, uh, once it comes to the state of Texas, Got because, it. cause, cause everything's bigger here and it knows that it, it just, it just has to, you know, put up and put up the numbers, you know, it just, it just can't be a oh, little, gosh. It, it can't be no rinky dinky little piece of crap. It has to this actually, is true. no, no. What they're saying is that when you put, or what he was saying is that when you put that grape at altitude, uh-huh. it, it gets a shot of adrenaline. Got it. And then when you put it, uh, when you take it away from a, a, uh, an area that doesn't have a lot of moisture in the air. Yeah. It decides that, Hey, you know what? I need to go find that water somewhere. So it, uh, it goes and starts burrowing and particularly up in the high plains where water is not readily available. Uh, but <laughs> it, it, uh, it definitely starts burrowing. Got it. And then also on top of that, it actually really likes the heat. Okay. A hundred degrees is, uh, one of those types of, uh, temperatures that isn't, um, that that doesn't kill it as much as as much as you'd think. It actually it actually helps it. It's it's reaching for every bit of sun that it can possibly get. Okay. But the, he was saying that the the one thing that he that he doesn't like about it is uh, he, one thing he does like about it is that it's vigorous, and the thing that he doesn't like about it <laughs> is, is that it's vigorous because <laughs> you can't turn you can't you know it's like he. I, he, he said he said he knew that I was a a little bit of a farm boy. He said, yeah, it's it's, the, it's uh, he's you know French or I don't know where he's yeah. from. Pierre, I'd assume he's from France. Um, Pierre, if you know where you're from, hey, you know, just uh, just <laughs> tell me in the comment section. Let us know. Uh, no, no, I was he was saying that his, uh, his one of the things that I remember him saying. I believe it was him or it was one of the guys out there that was saying is that it's the it's the wine grape. That's a lot like a it, that's a lot like a goat. You can't turn your back on it without it kicking you in the ass. <laughs> oh it just, Lord! It's just it's just extremely vigorous, and you got to keep an eye on it. Interesting. So, so let's see who else is growing. See, Todd knows everything about how the Negro Maro is growing. I know. Texas. In Texas, we have. Here's the thing. <sighs> here's what I have seen. Just to give all of y'all out there just a little bit of what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, because we're in sales. We go around and talk to these uh, restaurant owners and stuff like that, yeah. and they, they all say the same thing. We, you know, we love Texas wine, but when it comes to the uh, individuals that are actually paying the dollars for it, they don't, whenever they see California cab and they see cab from anywhere else unless it's you know old world somewhere you know it, it either yeah e either france or w wherever it is um texas loses that battle that's true every time and i just saw a freaking california cab that was like 9.97 for three of them and we saw them for sale. We went to a concert and i'm like this is disgusting yeah and someone would have that over over a good bottle of negro amaro interesting because they just because they know california cab and that's it that's why we're letting you guys know what's up now that's here why we now here's you. the thing texas has done an extremely good job on the tempranillo keep it up we need that but the alionico the monopolciano mm -hmm. those are the those are the are the other ones that everyone kind of knows but then we have to make a name for ourselves outside of Cab and outside of Chardonnay. I, agree. I know RK I agree. is doing a heck of a uh, doing a hell of a job. You guys are. I I have uh, there is I have never found I have not found one good Chardonnay in the state of Texas, and I've tasted a lot of them. And I am not going to name names, but RK, you guys have kicked ass it's really with good your yeah it's really good it's very light really good um so who else is growing negro Mara here in texas we got finca de la luna vineyards in lampus 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 <laughs> lampus texas no yeah, that's down that's down next to fort hood I, I mean actually i had a couple buddies that lived there when i was in oh fort okay hood. Yep. Um, and you actually talked to Andrew and Julie on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, actually, actually, it was on. Uh, it was actually a uh, Jeff Cope actually went and did a a uh, a couple pictures of, or he did a picture, or yeah. a couple pictures of of the uh, midnight in the vineyard. Okay. Hashtag Eden Hill. 
<laughs> and and, and uh, so you know, I had I had made a couple comments on there, and I had made a couple predictions, and I do stand by that prediction that in ten years, um, in ten years, as long as Texas continues to go the way of Negro Marl, uh-huh. Negro Marl will be the grape that Texas is known by. Okay. I, I, I will say that. And, you know, that that is a... Every time I talk to sommeliers and all the other individuals that are up and coming, they sit there and say, you know what? I don't... You know, California Cab, there's so much of it. Yeah. That, yeah. You, know, pe- you know, I can buy it. You know, I can buy uh, Robert Foley for, you know, $13 a bottle. Yeah. And, and turn around and sell it for 85 bucks a bottle. And consistently do that, which is, you know, hey, Robert Foley is a great they, bottle of yeah. wine. They really are. And they I, have a I great brand. Any. They've got, it's good wine and have a great brand. But Except when, for the Griffin. I was not impressed with their Griffin. But uh, when you, you really know, look at it, everyone has their bottle. one one bottle. Or bottle. You probably had a bad one. But in, in at any rate, I feel like with that, like you're having to build like really strong brands with that. And you're going to have to build a really strong brand. Um anyways but the market is so fierce it's like you know what how can we make ourselves different um how can we be a disruptor and i really feel like texas is being the disruptor within the texas or within the wine industry just across the globe so that's really cool well that's because we uh, that's because we have so many different types of uh wine grapes so many different uh varietals yeah i mean it's it's amazing to see how different varietals actually uh, interact with the texas climate yeah it's it's awesome to see it it really is actually i mean it actually really is um then let's see high meadow winery in high texas is doing negro amaro and then we have uh pepper jack vineyards up in the high plains that's doing negro amaro so if you look at a map i mean negro amaro is growing all over texas so it'll actually be really interesting to see how this all turns out well, it's interesting to see how not only will, I mean, it's it's interesting to see high, you know, you look at, you know, high meadows and mm-hmm. obviously it's in high Texas. And what is it growing? Uh, Alianico, Montepulciano, yep. Negro. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's in Tempranillo. I mean, it's all, I mean, all except for Tempranillo. That's, it's, it's all a, uh, you know, Alianico, Montepulciano, and Negro yeah. Maro. That's all an Italian varietal. And it's, and it's growing very, very well there. It's It's interesting to see how, just that one little area is 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 uh, being able to produce those those three things. I yeah, mean, I suppose. I mean, they it's, have seven acres yeah, that they're I, doing there. Um, but we but, need we need to make more of that. We yeah. need to make more of it. Come on, guys, let's do it. Um, so Every, it's it's interesting because it, it was interesting. We were talking to uh, us. Actually, it, this is kind of a cool story that I enjoy pulling out of the sack every once in a while and sharing with people, but. It was, uh, we were actually, we were actually at a very high end, we were actually at a, uh, well, I mean, sitting there talking to some of the sommeliers and one of the guys is, you know, he's a younger guy, about 27, 28 years yeah. old. Yeah. And, you know, he, you know, he sat down with us and the old guy there, I, well, I won't call Steven old. He's, he's, uh, he's older than me. So anyone older than me, anyone older than 31 is old to me. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, he had kind of, you know, the, the, the general manager had kind of looked at us like, ah, you know, I've tasted all of Texas wine and it just, it just isn't that good. You know, and, you know, he kind of does his whole thing. And, and then I got the next generation there, which is, you know, the mid twenties, yeah, mid twenties generation. And every one of them, I don't know, there's about five of them that, uh, we're like, yeah, we're open to it, but you know, Steven is the boss and you know, if he says it sucks, well then it all, then it all sucks, you know? And they, they really, they, the, the, the training that it goes down is, is it's, it's interesting to see how that, uh, perception actually permeates Well, yeah, because, I mean, you know, cause... I mean, everyone looks up to him and, and everything else, but, but it's very not interesting giving him the credit where he, his no, mind's no, no. changed. His, no, no, we his, changed his mind. It's absolutely. That's what I'm getting to oh. is that as soon as I opened up that bottle of Negro Amaro, yeah. there was like every one of them was looking at it. Like you put something, Texas? you put something in this from California into this bottle and that's why it tastes so good. It, it, that's, that's legitimately what, what they were saying to yeah. me. It's, and it's very interesting to see how 
all of that kind of, uh, it, it, like I said, all you grape growers out there, you guys have to start looking at it and saying, let's go a different route. We cannot compete with California Cab because the customer will not go for it. Well, and we have to have understand to... We have to understand that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. But I, I think, you know, kind of the other point of it, they've got to be, um, they've got to kind of sell what sells, if that makes sense. Um, some people are not as well versed on just the varietals that are actually out there. So all they kind of know is a sweet muscat and um, well, yeah. a Chardonnay. No, I'm not, and, I'm not going to deny that. Um, a, Cabernet. And so we already know how expensive it is to start a winery. And so you want to start making money as soon as possible. And I'm not saying people are in it to make money, but when you oh, invest... Hey, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Yeah, I completely understand it. Yeah. There is a bottom line that has to be met. But I'm just looking at it from the perspective of, hey, you know what? If, if we want to stop being viewed as the uh, California rejected fruit dump ground then we have to do something a little bit different. We have to look at things a little bit differently. And if we, if we realize that, if we look at it through those, per, through those eyeglasses, yeah. then what happens there is we realize, hey, wait a minute here. Outside, you know, why put all of this time and energy into doing something that, you know, hey, it might be just as good as, as uh, California. Mm -hmm. It may be even better than California. We, might ha we have heat units that we can that we can really cook the water out of the stuff. Okay, Roger got it. But on the same token, why would we want to go that direction and just be known as California light? No, I I totally agree. That's the I thing. I totally agree. If we want to be known, if we want to be known as a powerhouse of wine, we have to do things differently I agree. in order to allow us to get outside or, or, or allow us to, to get that, um, that reputation in a different direction. I mean, look at, look at Oregon, look at Washington. They just said, Hey, you know what? We're, we're, we're Pinot. And you know what? We're going to charge $30 a bottle. That's it. And it worked and, and they, it worked and they, and they're making some great, you know, great wines. Out Absolutely. Of that. Well, no, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Well, y'all, you know what? This Negro Amaro that we have, um, it is 100%. Actually, I can't say it's 100%. Um, I just looked it up. Since it's a Sol Solentino, it, could, it can actually be between 85% and 100% of Negro Amaro. So I'm not sure which one it is. Um, it's actually um, an IGT wine so that means it's a super tuscan done in the tuscan style it's italian wine done in tuscan style um let's see i hey you guys i took a class i took a class shout out to daniel yes daniel colada he actually is a very good teacher if you ever need someone to teach you about uh, about wine sit under daniel um he's really good at explaining everything out in great detail um he'll have you there till midnight but he explains it all out in great detail um but yeah this is you know this negro amaro is really good um the more i drink it the more i'm like okay todd i'll agree with you that texas negro amaro okay yeah, that's it, it a better. Does, yeah, it does it better than it than I agree. Italy. Well, we've only had this one, so I'm not gonna say all Italian Negro. Well, Amaro. no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jump out there on that. I'm not gonna yeah. go out on limb, that limb that far. Yeah, no, but I mean, I still enjoy it. It's really easy sipping. Um, you know, if you're looking for something that's different, not complicated, you just want to, you know, have a little cigar have a little wine. Um, this is really great. Um, but you know, keep, keep up with us. I think we can want to continue taking, going to the wine store, looking at, uh, varietals that we grow here in Texas, bringing that bottle and putting it against Texas. Absolutely. See what it tastes Absolutely. like instead of us like just going raw, 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 Texas, let, let's put the grapes or, well, let's put our money where our mouth is. Uh, literally, um, we tell you a hundred percent, we believe 
Texas wine is so good and it's we're out here just trying to change people's mind and I'm like one at a time one at a time um but you know I I think that if people were just really open-minded and just go you know what let let's see where this goes um, they will be blown away absolutely so, this was really exciting yeah and, and I want to do the uh Alionico next okay because Parasos has an excellent Alionico and um, actually, Eden Hill has an excellent Alianico as well. I will, I will give credit where credit is due on that. I mean, their Negro Amaro is is obviously out of this world. Yeah, but I will be. Uh, you know, that Alianico is a is a very interesting grape as well. And then also, the, obviously, Tempranillo and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, let's do it. Y'all come along this journey with us and. Um, you know, here pretty soon we're working on so many things for y'all. Uh, we can't wait for you to be able to actually join in on us or join in with us on these tastings. So keep your ears and eyes open. And I know we're moving slow. It's just Todd and myself, uh, behind, behind <laughs> the scenes. Um, and we do have day jobs. And we do have day jobs. So we are. And we barely sleep at night. Exactly. Um, so we're running as fast as we can. And we don't say that. Don't feel bad for us because we're having an, a, an amazing time. But we're all, I say all of that. We can literally drink on the job <laughs> and the boss True. can't fire us. True. Um, but I say all of that just to say, you know, things move a lot slow, slower for us. Um, but we're excited. And so thanks for joining us. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.